Hey folks, welcome back to Green Iron TV. So, got the Jeep all done, all assembled. Time for markings. So, our good friends over at Delta Team Decals have sent us over a kit for the M38A1. Uh, we got hood markings and stars, and uh, they even did us a couple special custom ones uh, so that we can uh, map some markings that were on uh, one of the Jeeps that my father drove. Uh, when he was with the ASA. Um, so we're going to be taking care of that. Just some regular old white spray paint. Nothing fancy. Guys have a tendency to overthink this quite a bit. Regular old white spray paint. Um, I got some primer gray and an orange and that's for a little bit of a special project for the special markings. So we'll see how we use those colors. So we're going to take care of all that. We're going to get the Jeep uh, laid out with all the markings and uh, get these paint masks applied and looking good on this Jeep. So stay tuned. That's what's coming up here on Green Iron TV. And like always, please give us a like, leave a comment. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. Thanks. Keep watching. Okay. One of the things we've done is kind of Go around the Jeep, spread out all the decals in kind of the general area where they're going to go. Uh, that way we're not tripping over everything as we wander around to figure out where they go. And so we got everything kind of laid out where it is going to start. Um, and we're going to then just find our spot, spot to start and go around this Jeep. And we're going to go ahead we're going to apply the paint mask stencils all around the Jeep, uh, then mask it off. Okay, we're gonna start here on this corner and uh, we're gonna start off with the, uh, with the tire pressure. And we're gonna peel back the top transfer layer and so we want to center this over the wheel so we're going to look kind of line this all up Just a touch. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to kind of center this on this lip. So we kind of have that now. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and smooth that down. paint mask unlike when we did the decals on the ambulance so we're going to take this top transfer layer off that was on the same type of decal that was on the ambulance except when we take this off now we're going to leave behind this low tack mask material and so we'll then mask off tape all around that and then we'll spray on this and then peel this off and it will leave the paint marking. So let's keep working it kind of way around the corner here. And we're going to do our fender star here. And we're going to, we kind of want to center that up in the, the fender area. So, unlike uh, the regular decal, so we got a couple little wrinkles over here in the corner. Yeah, we'll try and work them out. But guess what? 
this is a mask material, so this is not that big a deal if there's a little bit of a wrinkle right out here. What we want to be concerned with is we have a good seal around those types of edges there, so. Because this is a low tack material, you can see it does lift up a little bit if you're pulling hard at it. So, no big deal, we just want to make sure we're smooth down. Perfect. Next, we're going to, while we're on the side, we're going to work on this hood. So, one of the important things is this cutout. So, you want to make sure you don't lay over that cutout. And so, uh, to help kind of visualize, we're going to kind of fold this, and that'll kind of help help us make a idea in the where the middle is. Um, and then, so in the space between the hook and the end there is our middle. We're going to kind of look at that, make sure that looks correct, make sure we're looking level, and then we're going to work our way up. Like we said before, wrinkles out here in the middle aren't that important. We want to make sure, see like right here we have one that's right close. Here we have one that's a little close. We want to work those down on the way. And this nice thing with the, the low tack material is you have the ability to lift it up. Make some corrections. It's easy. So this is one of those things where you are working on a complex surface. So you want to just do your best. Make sure you get it on as straight and as best you can. We're going to work our way across our front bumper. With that all important 313th ASA marking that was on my father's Jeep.
got kind of a unique situation there. And this point of this A is in the hole. Adjust it a little bit there, make it work. And just like I had on this vehicle before, we did have an ASA patch here just inside the shackle. And so we'll place that again. So although this patch or this marking wasn't originally on the Jeeps, I like to put it on because it is a cool marking and it uh, it helps people understand what group they were. We got a star here. So we know this slot right there is the middle of the grill. So we just wanna get that line good. Next is one of the special decals. So this uh, is a lightning bolt uh, that was seen on their Jeeps in Key West. Uh, and they were painted colors to differentiate what unit or what platoon. Um, originally in the pictures, they were centered here in the middle of the bumper, but we are gonna do the star. So I am gonna move it over here towards the shackle. And we're going to have it over here on the side by the shackle. Okay, and this lightning bolt is why uh, we had that orange paint, because uh, like their Jeeps, um, orange signified the different platoons, and uh, they had orange and blue, which, imagine that, are the, the 
colors of the unit, which are also signal core colors. So uh, I can see why, definitely why they went with uh, yellow and blue as their designators. Or not yellow, I'm sorry, orange and blue. And so, yep, we will be uh, painting that one orange along with two more on the rear corners. Company six vehicle. And then our Fender Star for this side. Lined up similar to the way it is on the other side. Keep moving around. All right. Now the important one, the, the big star on the hood. And so a common mistake that's quite often made, and that is most people have a tendency to put this star on in the incorrect direction a lot of guys want to place it like this with the start with the point pointing towards the windshield that is correct on World War II Jeeps everything post-war is supposed to have the point pointing forward because like anything our military is full of symbolism and this symbolizes the star pointing forward, as in moving forward and not backwards. So, all right. So we do have this foot loop here. So what we're going to do, we're going to grab a knife. Where we go over this footman loop, we're going to go ahead and cut some of this out, make a little bit of a relief there. Except we missed it by a mile. All right, that should allow us to. So like, as you're going over like a rounded edge like this, a lot of times it's easier if you kind of keep this outside edge lifted up and that lets you kind of push it down in without being stuck here on the outside. And that allows you, that way it doesn't kind of like stretch the material.
All right, now back to the rear. So we got the 25 tire pressure here to go over this rear wheel. Maybe if I can my fingers to get it started. Same thing, we know we want to center it there. Above that rear axle. Now, for the rear stars, this is going to be a little tricky because we have this antenna plate here. And so we're going to actually kind of have to, this is going to be a little bit of a work to get this all laid out uh, because there's the screws and hard edges. So we're going to kind of figure out what's going to, how it's going to lay on there the best. So we know we got our four screws. So if we can go around them a little bit. So we knew that we can around these screws up here so if we make make a couple cuts here to put some relief in there try and go around those screws Can be rather tricky and challenging here. And so we have this lip. So we might have to get a little creative around this one. But the nice thing is, is you know, we're working with a simple shape with a star. So we got these screws, so we're going to have to do a little work around these screws. So like I said, we are going to get creative around these corners and stuff. So, 
we know where these screws are. So what we're going to have to actually do now is we're going to have to go in and we're going to have to actually use some mask, fine masking tape and correct in the, those points where we're coming around. But it won't be too hard because, like I said, we're working with straight lines and simple things. So next, we're going to add our lightning bolt. And so originally, uh, Dad's Jeep did not have the rear stars. It just had the lightning bolts up there. Um, uh, for my personal preference, I want to have the stars because it signifies so much of being a U.S. Army vehicle. Um, so, I'll, And I do have the room, so I am going to add the lightning bolts here down below the star. So they're still going to symbolize the same thing. Um, they're just going to be in a slightly lower position. And frankly, nobody's going to know the difference. Like I said, so we are going to have to get a little creative here with some of the blue tape. So what this is going to allow us to do is kind of shape in and around those spots. Make sure these points are good. A little spot there that we want to cover. Take care of this side. <laughs> okay. Simply, we're down to the last two here, which is our rear bumperettes. And so we're going to get those placed. All right, that's the last of the paint mask stencils. So now we'll move on. We'll mask off all the surrounding areas with some paper and get ready to spray. Okay, we're going to lay down some paper, mask off the areas. So you don't have to get too crazy, you're just trying to cover up.
Okay, we're going to continue to go on around the Jeep, masking off areas with paper, and leaving our mask exposed. Okay, we got all the areas around the paint mask, all masked off, taped off. Here on the back. Here on our bumpers, ets. Here on the other side. Tire pressure, our fuel caution. So, you know, we got everything all masked off. So we're ready to spray. So one of the big things we're gonna do is we're gonna go around, and we're gonna rub all the edges, make sure everything is down good. And from there, we're gonna go ahead and spray our first couple coats of paint. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna start with is a little bit of gray primer, and that's only for these lightning bolts because we're gonna paint it orange. And the orange is pretty thin, and so when we spray it over this dark green, it's gonna bleed out and not look real good. So we're gonna start with a little quick drying primer. And just a little gray primer, just to kind of lighten up those areas. Okay, we're gonna move on to our white. And what you want, it's just light coats. You don't wanna be spraying super, super heavy on all this stuff. You wanna go in light coats. Nice and light on these first rounds. All right, now that we've done some light coats around, we're gonna let this white paint flash up and then we'll go back and we'll hit it with another light coat and we'll keep building up light coats. Now that that coat is kind of tacked up, go back. Another light coat. All right, we'll let that coat set up and we're getting pretty good coverage. So probably one more and that'll be probably pretty good. Okay, now for a third and final light coat.
Okay. That's gonna look pretty good. So we got one last color to do here. We're gonna hit those little spots with some orange and then get this unpeeled. All right, we're gonna hit our lightning bolts with a little bit of orange. Give them a good color. Okay, now we'll go in. We're gonna take up all this heavy paper. Okay, that gets the majority of the paper off. And we're gonna let this paint dry up a little bit and then uh, get them unmasked. Okay, folks, we went off to dinner, let the paint dry. And a good way to check is you can touch it out here in the middle where it's not, and you can feel that it's dry. So the big thing, you want the paint to dry. I know a lot of people try and take the mask off too early while the paint's still a little wet. And the pet, the paint is then like stretchy, kind of gooey, and it'll peel back up. You want to let it, the paint dry. And then the big key to all this is when you pull, you want to pull on an angle to the letters. And you want to pull back almost completely over top of itself. Now, yes, it's going to probably rip and tear in some spots. That's perfectly fine. Because you can go back in. Also, by letting the paint dry, you don't have to worry about as it folds over and stuff like that, that it might touch somewhere else and, you know, leave a mark. So I'm just peeling it back. All right, and then for these centers, you just gotta be kind of gentle. You just wanna kind of get the corner started. All right. 
So just that simple. Same thing here, we'll do this tire pressure. So we're gonna pull back, basically over itself, and leave a nice marking. Like these big stars, I like to kind of work my way around them. Okay, we'll work across these front ones. By pulling at those angles, you can see, look at the nice crisp edge lines that we end up having. All right, this is one I'm excited to see. Our orange lightning bolt. Wow, look at that. That looks good. Looking good. All right, work on our rear pieces here. Same thing, nice. Easy. And something you guys might notice, so my tire pressure markings and actually when we get to the other side, the fuel caution, I've done that in what's known as marsh stencil and the hood numbers and the regular gothic just because um, the pictures of the Jeep uh, had a mix like that uh, of the Jeep that my father drove. So I kind of wanted a little bit of that mismatch. Um, you know, making it look, you know, like a motor pull vehicle. So that's why we did that. Let's see how this turned out. This was kind of a difficult set with lightning bolt on that side. Nice. Okay, and our fuel caution. Nice. Mm. 
and the rear corner on the side. Oh, see, there's a little blim there, and I kind of figured that. Because when I was taking up the tape, it lifted a corner and, and kind of had a bad spot. But as you can see, we'll, we can clean that up just a little bit. Just gently kind of. We don't want to dig into the green paint. We just want to peel off some of that white. And an orange lightning bolt on that side. All right. Okay, folks, that's going to wrap up this episode of Green Iron TV. Markings are all done. And looking sharp on this Jeep. Everything looks really, really good. Everything turned out really good. I um, want to really thank the guys over at Delta Team Decals uh, for making the awesome paint mask set. Turned out absolutely beautiful. Um, can't recommend them anymore to any of you guys out there who are looking for military markings. They, both, they do both decals and paint mask sets. Uh, they have standard kits. They'll, they'll even do some custom stuff uh, if you have some crazy ideas. Um, you know, just like me wanting to do these, or or these orange lightning bolts that were present on uh, my father's Jeep uh, when he was served with the 313th ASA uh, during the Cuban Missile Crisis. So, got it all done, looking good. We have a show coming up next weekend. That was the big push to get this thing done for. Um, so, should be looking good in the show. Uh, you know, overall, paint masks are, are a great tool. They, they look really good when they're done proper. Um, they are quite a bit more labor intensive than doing the decals. And I know there's a lot of debate, decal versus paint mask. Um, paint mask or painted markings were the standard from World War II all the way up through, um, all the way up until about 1962 to 64 in that range. Then the Army started making the switch over to the decals. And so decals were pretty standard from the early 60s there all the way to about the mid 70s when they switched over to the camouflage uh, and, and really did away with a lot of the, the big markings on vehicles. So that gets us uh, looking period correct for this Jeep. Like I said, I did do uh, a little bit of a change up. So I did do the uh, standard Gothic font on the army markings, the bumper markings, uh, but then things like the tire pressures and the fuel caution. Um, I did that in what's known as the Marsh stencil font um, just to change it up, break it up a little bit, um, because uh, there are pictures of the Jeep. As a matter of fact, we'll insert a picture of the Jeep my father drove in Key West right here. And so, as you can see, it's got a little bit of everything marked on it. Um, I didn't want to go that eccentric. Um, I did want kind of a standardized marking, uh, which is why I did go with the stars and stuff like that. Um, but I did want a little bit of flavor to it, so that's why we changed it up a little bit. Uh, absolutely tickled to death with my orange lightning bolts. Those are just fantastic. Um, and, of course, I put the top on. I got it folded under like he has in the picture there. So uh, we're pretty much ready to roll with this thing to the next show. So I want to thank you all for sticking around and watching this episode here on Green Iron TV. Um, and remember, like always, please give us a like, leave a comment, 
If you haven't already, please, please hit that subscribe button. That way you can stick around for all our Green Iron Madness as we continue working on a plethora of uh, Army and military vehicles that we have here in the shop. So thanks a lot and have a great day.